Hey guys, this is Sam from Southern Balance. Uh, I've got a really cool build for you. I just wanted to share it. Uh, I know that this might bore some of the people that might be watching this for entertainment, but for anybody who's out there who does a flea market or craft show, I'm going to tr try to leave in a lot of details so you'll know exactly what to do. So because I'm going to do that, I'm asking you to subscribe and like my channel as well as this video because I'm probably going to lose the support of other people that are just watching it for entertainment. Um, anyway, so this is what you're going to need. You're going to need one 2x6. I happen to pay $3.47 for mine. Uh, it's 8 feet long. And you're going to need, need a piece of uh, PVC pipe that's 3 quarters of an inch. And mine's 10 feet. And I paid $2.97 for it. And I bought some caps. They're going to be PVC caps. They're going to look like that. And I bought three of these that came to it. They were 58 cents each. Came to $1.74. So my total cost of materials is $8.18. So this is pretty much what it looks like, if you can see it. So that you're gonna see a two by six, you're gonna see a piece of PVC. Now what you're also gonna need, I already happen to have mine, is a can of spray paint, and mine is gloss black, as well as some stain. It won't matter the color, I might even, uh, I might even dig out some more stain and stain mine three different colors and I'll explain that to you so um, first we're gonna set up the tripod a little bit different okay guys I apologize for the awkward camera angle but this is I have no place to put the camera so bear with me so for now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this uh, PVC which is the three quarters of an inch it's ten feet long we're gonna get this out of our way for right now so just give me a second to put that over here and I'll show you what to do with that in a minute or in a few minutes Okay guys, um, so I'm going to take my 2x6, and I've already got these gun silhouettes, they're all cut out already. These Each one is a different shape, but I'm going to use, I guess, the top three here, and I'm going to show you how we're going to make some really cool guns, and I'm going to show you how to turn this material that costs less than $10 into around $150, so bear with me. So we're going to take this gun, like I said, they're all different shapes, they're very thin, because again, they're just like silhouettes, and I'm just going to lay them out. And just position them like that. What you're going to do when you position these is you're going to uh, kind of look for the knots that are in the wood and you're going to try to position these around the knots. If the knot's going to end up right in the stalk, that's okay. You just don't want it to end up, you know, right at the edge of something. So uh, we're just going to just move these around a little bit. So we're going to try to avoid this one here. And do it kind of like that. And then I'll use this one. No particular order. I guess like that works. Okay, so for now we're going to get rid of these. Right okay, so hopefully this shows up on camera. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take each one of these. If you notice, I've got each one of these laid out on this 2x6. I've got three on here. And now I'm going to trace each one. Uh, there might be parts of this video I'm going to speed up a little bit because I really like to leave in a lot of the detail on some of the other shots. So for now, I'm just going to trace around these and I'll probably speed that up when I edit it out. Okay guys, I don't know if that shows up on camera. I guess I will try to show that to you if that's possible. So all I've done is I've just, you know, drawn those out. Pretty simple. Okay, I got three of them on there. I suppose if you get a longer piece of wood, uh, then you can draw possibly even a fourth one out. Uh, but, you know, this is all that would fit in my truck at the time. I bought several pieces actually. Right. 
So uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to cut these out. Um, I'll probably end up speeding up that part of the video also because there's other parts I want to spend more time on. Okay guys, so I didn't realize that my battery ran out while I was cutting these, so I apologize that you missed out on me cutting all of them. Uh, I was going to speed the film up anyway. Anyway, the next step is now what we're going to go do is we're going to go uh, brand our name on the inside of it, so when somebody's holding it up to them that the name is on the inside. But we're going to go ahead and do that now, so just follow along. Okay guys, so after we've put our name on each one, now what we're going to do is we're going to make the little area where the trigger goes, we're going to make that uh, right now. Okay, so what we do now is we're going to take a Forstner bit and we're going to drill this out. Okay guys, being that I couldn't uh, take the guns over to the big drill bit, or the drill press, I'm sorry, with the camera, I thought I'd bring this smaller one over here. I've installed the Forstner bit already in the, in the uh, drill press. It's a 1 and 3 eighths, so we're going to take the gun and we're going to put it in here like this. Now we're just going to repeat that. <laughs> okay, so we have all the trigger holes drilled like this. And now I'm going to show you how to cut this channel up on the top. So let's, we're going to go ahead and remove the drill, and I'm going to bring a vise over here. Okay guys, so I'm all set up. What it is, I built this special jig that holds my router in place. And what I'm using is I'm using a round router bit. So I'm gonna I'm gonna ride the stock of the gun all the way up and it's gonna create a channel. So let's do that now. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually gonna make it just a little bit deeper. I try not to do it all in one pass, so we're just gonna go just a little bit deeper with it, and we're gonna cut it again. 
it's really awkward for me to do this with the camera right there that's why it's a little bit shaky for me because usually i have all the room but i was really trying to show you what i was doing but anyway let's hit it again and see what happens <laughs> Okay guys, so we're going to do that on all three of them. And again, we have to take our router bit, kind of adjust it a little bit and make it not so deep for the first pass. And we're going to make that just a little bit deeper for the second pass. Okay guys, now we're going to do that one more time. Okay guys, I don't know if that shows up on camera, but you'll be able to see that a lot closer in just a little while. So what we're going to do now is we're going to get out our router table. Okay, so now we have our router set up. We have our bit put in, which is a 45 degree angle bit, and we're going to route the bottom of the stalk and then all around it. Alright guys, so sometime during that filming when I was using the router table, uh, my battery went out. So you didn't get to finish, uh, you didn't get to see me finish doing that, but I do have all three of the guns routed. So now we're going to move the router table out of the way and we're going to move to the next step. So just kind of bear with me, step by step. Okay guys, <clears throat> now that we've got all three of the guns ready to go, we're going to sand them really fast. Let's do that now. <laughs> Guys, I've got all the guns sanded, so what we're going to do is we're going to move on to staining them. That's going to be the next step. Alright guys, we got all three guns laid out. I've already got my stain open and stirred. And so what we're going to do is we're going to stain each one of these. And we're going to do each one of these a completely different color. So it's going to be a kind of a surprise to me and you both to see how they turn out. Um, anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to start with uh, 
inside of the trigger hole because that's where I have to coat you know the most of it. So we're just gonna like kind of slop it on inside. Normally, you know, there's certain things that I stain, I use a brush, but there's other things that I make that uh, I find a rag to be even uh, easier for me than, than the brush. Okay, now that we have that one stained, we're going to put this one to the side, we're going to work on another one. one. <clears throat> I actually like this color quite a bit. It looks really it looks really rich on here. Okay guys, so we stained all three guns. I'll show those to you in a few minutes. We're gonna move on to the next part. But uh, let me stop the camera for a second so I can get these gloves off and get this area cleaned up and we'll move on to the next part. Okay guys, so we're going to move on. We've already stained all the stocks. I have them sitting to the side. I'll show you those in a little while. Now we're going to move on to the PVC. This is the 3 quarter inch. It's 10 feet long. So what we're going to do is we're going to measure 30 inches and we're going to cut them. So let's do that now. So we're going to do it for the best. And we're going to measure 30 inches. Okay guys, so what we're going to do is we're going to paint these black, but give me a second to get set up for that. But now what we're going to do is we're going to use Rust-Oleum, it's a gloss black, if you can see that. And we're going to spray these 3 quarter inch, 30 inches long PVC pipes. And also the caps, remember we talked about the caps? That's the caps, okay? We're going to paint those. So everything's painted, we're going to have to uh, mount these tomorrow because obviously that's wet. Hey guys, welcome back. Okay, so we're going to finish up the guns today. I actually could have finished them up in one day, but my paint wasn't dry, so I had to let them dry overnight. So we're going to finish them up now. So the things you're going to need for this part of it, let me show you like this. You're going to need two clamps, I'll show you why. We're going to need some PVC glue and cement, uh, my primer happens to be uh, purple and then the cement part the glue is blue to be honest with you if I was gonna do it again I would buy clear um, I'm kind of upset that these are these colors and you'll see why but uh, you know I'm gonna work with what I have uh, yesterday at the end of the day we painted our caps you'll understand that in a minute and then those are our barrels and you can see how the guns came out they actually came out pretty good so <clears throat> the way we're gonna start this is we're gonna open our primer and cement okay yesterday when I was painting the barrels if you noticed I lifted them up so I could paint inside I don't know if you could see it but see I painted inside so it's black on the inside this side not so much okay but it didn't matter on this side so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our primer which again is purple and I'm not happy about it wish I had a rag there maybe but let's see if we can make do and um, we're gonna go like this and I'm not going the full length I'm just doing just a little bit um, we're just gonna remove some of that black paint 
I guess I could have taped it off, but you know, this works just as easy. I don't use this PVC primer and glue for anything else, so I'm not worried about the primer getting a little bit of, you know, residual paint in it. So it's really not a big deal. But uh, I guess everybody can do whatever works for them. So we're going to prime it just like we did. And then we're going to take the cement. And um, I guess if you're doing plumbing, you're going to want to goop it on there pretty good, but this is not plumbing so we're actually trying to get a whole bunch of that blue glue off of there and we're going to put just like a little layer and actually I really do try to put it thin even though it comes out kind of thick I, I try to make it thin and then we're going to take the cap that we uh, painted yesterday and we're going to put that on there kind of turn and twist and push down all at the same time and we're just going to hold it just give that a minute to set up And then once we do that, we're just going to put that to the side. We're just going to put it like this. So all we're going to do is we're just going to repeat that. So uh, I might cut this part out or I might kind of leave it in. Just so you can see, we're going to take the primer again. We're just going to go around it. Just remove that paint that's on there. Turn it, make sure you get the back. I don't know what's in that primer, but it sure gets that paint off. And once you've done that pretty good, we're going to take the glue and um, once again try to get pretty much as much off of it as you can. Because even with that little amount, it's, it's actually still too much because it still oozes out. So we're just going to put just the slightest amount on. The glue actually sort of lubricates it also, so it helps the cap to slide on. So we're going to take the cap again. And then just push down. Just hold it for a second. Just takes a minute or so to just set up you hold it because for some reason that glue makes for some reason it makes it want to back off and it sort of like uh, pulls itself out I'm not sure why it does that but it does that so um, anyway let's move on to the last one always make sure you have the end with the white on it uh, and not the not the end that you painted so one more time One more time with the glue, just put a very thin line around it, but making sure that you are coating it so it can slide onto the cap. And then we're going to take the painted cap like we did before and just slide it inside and just push off. And that's pretty much it. I'm just going to give that a second to dry. Okay, so at this point we're just going to put these barrels to the side. Okay, so now we're going to take one of our guns. Uh, what I did off camera was I drilled a couple of holes in here. I'm sorry I didn't do that on camera, but what we're going to do is we're going to take our, our drill bit, which has the Phillips head on it. And I know this isn't what most people would do, but this is what I do. So you take your two little holes, put the drill bit in there. There's no drill. There's no screw. I'm just going to put it in there and just turn it on. That's the easy way to make it countersink. Do that on both of them. Okay. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take this really neat jig that I made. If you guys remember how I made this barrel, I did the same thing to, to this uh, piece of wood, and then I took a piece of uh, t-shirt material, and I took some spray adhesive, and I sprayed my wood, and then I put the t-shirt 
on there and then I took a, a, another piece of pipe and I pushed it in there so basically I have a padded jig okay so what we're gonna do by the way this has a name on it it's called Dura D-U-R-A we're gonna make that facing up because it just looks good for aesthetics so we're gonna put it on here like this okay we're gonna face that name up make sure it's nice and level move it to the front we're going to take our jig put it on top like this and that enables you to screw into it without that barrel popping up so sometimes this really could take another set of hands but hey man when you're one guy and you're working by yourself this is all you got so just kind of hold it on there give that just clamp that down Make sure that name is not twisted, which mine is. So we're going to loosen that a little bit. Okay, we're just going to turn that name towards straight up and down, like that. I'm going to give that another clamp down. You know what? I feel like it's twisting again. It is kind of hard by yourself, huh? So let's see if we can maneuver that. Let's see. One more time. So guys, let me just tell you, when you're building something, you're going to mess up sometimes. You're going to make mistakes. Don't let that stop you. I've been making things for about eight years, but I promise you, before, before I ever started, I never made anything. I'm completely self-taught. I've made a ton of mistakes. I've broken tools. I've wasted material. But until you get out there and you start, you, you're just never going to know. So you just got to give it your best. Okay, so I didn't cover my holes with the clamps. You can see I've got my jig on there. Um, the name is straight, so I'm just going to give these one little extra clamp down so they can't come off of there. And then we're going to take our screw. Now, I'm going to tell you something. Depending on the thickness of your stock, these screws are going to change sizes. But I measured mine, and I, the, I'm going to use a two and a half inch, and that's long enough where it's going to go into the wood through the stock and through the bottom of the PVC. Oh, you know what? We're going to pre-drill that first. How's that? That's what we're going to do. Okay, guys. So you need a drill bit that's obviously long enough, and we're going to go into this uh, pre-drilled hole, and we're just going to go through the bottom of the PVC, not both layers, just the bottom layer. Okay. Okay, so we're going to do that. Now, we're going to take our screw and put it in here. Get our screw gun. We're nice and countersunk. I'm going to do the other one. Okay. We're going to take our clamps off. Yeah. Yeah. There you go, guys. Pretty badass looking gun, huh? So, what I'm going to do at the end of this video, I'm going to finish these two up. I'll even do it on camera. But what we're going to do after these video, after this video, is I'm going to show you these hanging in my shop. I'm going to show you how I displayed them. Uh, I want you to know that I I made my own display, and um, in all honesty, I didn't want to spend any money when I was doing it. So I drove around uh, during heavy trash, and when you see my display, it's going to look pretty badass. And you're going to know that everything that it took to make that was picked up in heavy trash, and it was just bare wood, raw wood, fencing material. Uh, the only thing I really spent money on were the casters that I bought for the, because uh, I put it on wheels, so I had to buy the casters. But other than that, other than me buying the wheels, I didn't spend any money on it at all. It was just just heavy trash so for all you guys out there that 
might not be working or you're out of work because of COVID or you just want to earn a little bit of money on the side, this is going to be like a really great, uh, great way to do it. It doesn't take a lot of effort. And uh, in all honesty, if I wasn't doing these on camera trying to show you the steps, uh, I could probably pop out about six of these in one day from beginning to end. Guys, the other thing is uh, for, for, for anybody who might be running their own uh, craft show booth or flea market booth, um, if you go to my page on Facebook, it's called Southern Balance Houston, look around, you'll see wind chimes hanging from the top, you'll see, you'll see pendant lights hanging from the top, you'll see fairy doors, license plate art, I spell your name in pictures, I do all sorts of things. Now you have to understand, there's not one thing that sells every weekend all day long. That's just not how it works. What it is, is a little bit of this sells, a little bit of that sells. And as long as you have a wide variety of things, and a little bit of everything sells, then you end up making money on your weekend. And um, so you can't just expect to make one item thinking that's going to be the hit item and if you go through one weekend of sales and that item just happens not to sell, well you can't get you can't let that discourage you. You know, I've had I've had weekends where I might not sell one single wind chime or pendant light. And um, you know, it kind of bothers you a little bit, but you know at the same time, the following weekend you might sell five or six of those just you know, just on a Saturday. So you just you gotta take the good with the bad, but that's why it's important to offer a wide variety. Of custom things so you, you know there's there's always something is gonna sell you can barely go through a whole weekend without something selling shoot okay I guess a little too much talking and not enough patience here but I'm trying to line that up the line of uh, all my talking what I'd like to get across is you can't be afraid to make mistakes I know that I'm repeating but it's true um, you know, I have a friend of mine that likes to keep all of his tools in boxes and keeps everything nice and clean. And uh, I've learned that that does not work for me because when I do that, it's a hassle to get my tools out. It's a hassle to make things. I like to leave everything out. I can walk around my shop using every tool that I have. And uh, when you do that, you just make like the most creative projects and, uh, you know, don't be afraid to just let go and experiment because that's where you come up with your really cool ideas. So guys, keep in mind that uh, this gun from beginning to end, other than the spray paint and other than the stain which I had, I'm into all three of these guns. For $18 and 18 cents. I'm sorry, not $18, $8.18. The reason why I got distracted is because I forgot to pre-drill. So see, we all make mistakes. So watch this. So I've already gone through, okay? But see, I could tell that it started pushing the barrel up and that's why I knew I didn't pre-drill. So we're gonna pre-drill this one. Okay, so we all make mistakes. Okay, so being that that happened, I'm going to move this clamp back back here because I need extra stability in the back section. So as bad as that was, as far as trying to film a video, I guess I'm glad it happened because then you see that even though I know what to do, I still made a mistake. So it just it happens. Look, and I can already see my drill bits I'm getting loose. Okay, and one more.
Okay. That's it. Guys, stay tuned after this video. I'm going to shoot one final shot in my shop so I can show you my display. Show you how I have these displayed in my shop. It might give you a, yeah, a good idea to display them yourself. Like I said, whether you do craft shows, flea markets, uh, we'll take a pretty close look. They look pretty cool, don't they? Okay. So. Okay, guys. Follow me to my shop. We're going to go take a look at the display, uh, see what it looks like. Keep in mind, I built the whole thing out of heavy trash. So we'll talk in just a little bit. Okay, guys, this is going to be a follow-up to what I built on camera. I built my guns. I wanted to show them to you on full display, and I wanted to show you the display that I built. Keep in mind, the entire thing was built out of heavy trash. So there you go guys that's how they look you can see how some of them I have the black caps on the barrel and other ones I trim them with silver and this one down here I don't know if you can if it shows up but that one I did a bronze barrel uh, yesterday when I was showing you the silhouettes and I was telling you that each one is a little bit different I was explaining uh, that this one you see how this the stock is a little bit more rounder here and then this one down here is gonna be a little bit more narrow and then those are about the same and then this one gets like really narrow right here if you can tell so each one's a little bit different each one has its own little style so you know it's whatever somebody's attracted to so anyway so that's my new uh, uh, gun display they seem to be doing really well again you can take a look at the way I built it I do have this mounted down here on the bottom it is screwed down so it's not going to come off uh, there's a hundred pounds of sand into this base so even if the wind blows well, I'm in good shape it's not going to go anywhere and if I decide to take this upper portion off of the base it actually collapses like an easel it collapses down and I can just fold it and put it away so anyway okay guys so that's the follow-up I hope you've enjoyed the video uh, I definitely would appreciate you uh, liking my channel and subscribing uh, I really would like to build up my subscribers. I don't know if my videos are boring or not because I do try to leave in a lot of detail. But uh, hey, I do what I can. So if, I, if you support my channel, I'll continue to make something for nothing, show you how it works. Uh, I encourage everybody to go out and make your own money in craft shows, flea markets, uh, sell them to your friends, post them on Facebook. Uh, I'll continue to show you how to make things. Anyway, uh, appreciate your time, guys. Thank you for watching.